From the front pages of your newspaper to the in front of your television screen, we give you the comprehensive press review, trending headlines and everything in between. Welcome once again to another exciting edition of The Headliner. I'm your host, Monica Chanda. And my name is uh, Kurt Lee Gwendy, and yes, uh, you are tuned in another Friday, another story, where today we delve into a topic that has sparked widespread uh, discussion and reactions across Zimbabwe. Yes, we are talking about a former detective who is popularly known for viral videos which targets and apprehends thieves in the Harare CBD, who was arrested for smuggling a car worth more than 12,000 United States dollars. We have had uh, different opinions from the public and, of course, social media, different headlines that have been trending and making their airwaves. But at the same time, to help us discuss, divulge, as well as dissect this story and uh, more, we have invited a journalist who is going to help us also just give us his opinion and take. And uh, this is none other than Takudzwa Terence Musakasa. Welcome, Takudzwa. Well, thank you for having me on this show. Yes, indeed. A quick story, um, uh, perhaps, uh, that has moved uh, from various platforms and obviously made its trends. Uh, just give us your view on uh, this uh, very, very viral issue. Okay, so um, as for what I know, what I've heard, and what I've seen on social media, uh, Detective Keda is, um, let's call him the Sherlock Holmes of Zimbabwe. Mm. Yeah, that kind of guy who <laughs> tries to do... Um, who I think he's, let's say he tried, because after this whole case of him being arrested, I think uh, his dignity has lost his dignity in the works that he has been doing. So yeah, Detective Keda is, um, let's say is, um, according to records, they say he's an ex-cop. Yes, yes. I, I don't know how far true that is. Uh. Um, some, according to social media, some have been saying he's a, he was a C10, mm. and others said he was contesting so, as an MP. So it takes one to know one, is that what's happening? Yeah. <laughs> okay, quite fascinating, but uh, we will be talking about all this and more in our second segment. I know, Monica, we have some headlines we have to tackle before we do anything and go further. Definitely headlines that are trending and we will be giving you some of those shortly. But I'm glad on the headliner today we have a very youthful journalist and that's the appreciation of the show. We always give you a diverse, uh, you know, a broad look at uh, the fraternity itself and give you a wider scope in terms of the kind of journalists that we have. So let's go into our headlines and this week we start with... Uh, Zim UK entering new trade era. So this is a, a headline in the Herald. And uh, they will be entering a new era as the influential Westminster Africa Business Group has expressed its interest to set up camp and open doors for British investments to come into the country. Yes. Very interesting one. Mm -hmm. And given that Zimbabwe is open for business, so it is indeed a time where Zimbabwe's investment portfolio is growing and it is looking at uh, the vast opportunities uh, that uh, the world, that the globe can actually tap into. Just recently we had the World Economic Forum. So that also comes on the sidelines of that uh, recent end to the World Economic Forum and just looking at how investment flows can come into the country and also tapping into the diaspora. Yes, yes, indeed. We can't speak investment without talking about uh, some of the pricing models we have in our country. And that takes us to our very next headline, which is uh, coming from the Daily News. Tagged, uh, government will get a grip on prices and uh, will do so in stepping up uh, with businesses, says our spokesperson, uh, Comrade George Charamba. As President Emerson Mnangagwa and his government are determined to get on top of the price crisis as well as the crisis around that and uh, it will achieve nothing it will achieve without uh, lording over it over to business and uh, most definitely uh, it is a time where there's a lot of uncertainty with regards to uh, some of the discrepancies that is between the US dollar as well as the Zimbabwe dollar yes and uh, it's also a time where we're starting the year so definitely it is a huge step where our financial year will start on a good note if government takes action Monica we turn to agriculture and a story, a headline in the Newsday, which uh, reads tagged uh, army worm scare unsettles farmers as army worm outbreak has rattled farmers who are already jittery over the El Nino induced uh, below normal rainfall season, which threatens blight in their crops. 
and I know that government has also tried to put in initiatives to cushion a lot of the farmers who were affected by the late rains. I mean, the El Nino weather patterns have affected uh, vast crops, but I think they are now on track. But with this army worm, definitely they need to contain it and no, manage yes. the situation. Yes, indeed. Uh, also appreciating that um, agriculture is the backbone of our economy, so definitely um, there is urgent action as well as immediate stances that need to be taken. And we move on to the Chronicle, um, uh, which is tagged ED meets chiefs on Gukura Hundi issues as the Second Republic takes bold steps towards finding lasting solutions and fostering national unity. We do know the 22nd of December is the day we celebrate National Unity Day, but after that accord, every day is a day that speaks um, uh, to bringing together all tribes or groups or ethnicities in Zimbabwe. So definitely a very, very big step uh, being taken on with regards to what the president is doing to make sure there is unison in the country, Monica. And lastly, we take a look at the tabloid H Metro. So tag deranged drugged daredevils as a very serious problem in cricket as it appears the sport is being torn apart by daredevils who have turned a giant theater for drugs abu uh, drug abuse uh, as two chevrons Wesley Madewere and Brandon Mavute, uh, Mavuta have been banned from the team for drug abuse. This is very disappointing, uh, but it also opens up uh, some of the issues that we find in sport. While we actually sweep some of these issues under the carpet, uh, we cannot overlook the fact that uh, sport has been, uh, you know, you know, it has been um, affected by issues of, of doping and hence why sporting federations always need to undergo workshops when it comes to uh, doping and always making sure that sportsmen and women are clean. Oh, yes. So this is a very disappointing outcome. I know, I know. And uh, I mean, what to say and what to do. All we can tell you is uh, drugs at large are not supposed to be taken. And uh, within the sporting culture, it's, we do know that it's a trend. But uh, we don't want to trend with that. We want to take you right back um, uh, to the issue. I know Takudzwa is itching to even be contributing to some of the headlines uh, that we were speaking about earlier on. Uh, but uh, this is still the headliner. We are going to be returning with the second segment. That's all we had in the first segment. Please. Don't go anywhere. Once again, welcome to the headliner, and this is the second segment where we are joined by a guest. Uh, we did introduce him earlier on, but what a way to start the second segment by reintroducing him. And we're excited to get into the topic of the day, which is sparking widespread debate. So reactions across Zimbabwe and abroad, the story of the former detective, popularly known as uh, uh, Detective Kedda. I mean, known for the viral videos uh, targeting and apprehending thieves in Harare. Unfortunately, it didn't turn out so good as a Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> that's what Taku <laughs> called him. And uh, I was going to contribute and say, wow, that's a very, very huge status and platform you've put him on there. But uh, Taku, well, briefly, maybe you can just share with us. Um, uh, we did see a lot of platforms uh, being able to, you know, break down um, uh, some of the works he was doing with regards to Kubata Mbava and uh, doing a lot of things specifically in the Harare CBD. However, um, you know, br b basically break to us, who is this character we're speaking about um, according to your study as, 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 as the knowledge you briefly gave us in the introduction, who is this detective and what is the story behind him? As for me, Detective Keda is one of those... Um, I want everyone to see me cop mm. because as of, as of what I know when you're doing detective work when you're doing Sherlock Holmes and everything you make sure that you do your things on the low mm. so that people won't know because right now if I'm to see him in town if I'm one of those guys who's doing deals yeah I have to stop you have right to run away so of course. undercover yeah. Yeah. operations yeah. so as of detectiving is, is more like an undercover work. Work, mm. yeah. So him posting these videos on social media. And showing his face, actually. Showing his face. Yes. Uh, it, it's more like he wanted attention. He mm. wanted people to see him. Mm. He wanted people to maybe thank him for what he's doing, which 
I know is not a work of a detective? That's not true. That's very true. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Yeah. That's not true of a detective. And uh, perhaps, Monica, maybe um, uh, you can chime in here. He showed his face and obviously, obviously light skinned like yourself. <laughs> and uh, that's, why he's called, uh, that's why he's called Keda. But um, let's look at perhaps his, 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 his portfolio vis a vis the credit he then got. The credit that he got was uh, being, as opposed to being undercover, he was overcover, for lack of a better word. And uh, does that sometimes affect um, people who are within this space um, that wants to catch thieves or nab thieves, um, especially then exposing it on social media? Okay. Um, okay. Let me let me let me take you a little bit back. Mm. So, as of um, scamming, scamming has been there yeah. for a while. And uh, I grew up in Mutare. Mm. And uh, coming to Arare, my dad was like, "Make sure that you don't get scammed." Yeah. Yeah. That was the first thing that he told me. So, um, yes, Detective Keda has been doing like good work. Mm. Um, as of what I've seen in Harare is like from the period that I came, mm -hmm. uh, a friend of mine got nabbed, um, lost a uh, web computer, yeah. reported to the cops and uh, nothing actually was done. Yeah. They're like, we're tracking this, we're doing this, we're doing this. And uh, Detective Keda, like what he has been doing, he has been actually recovering these things for the people. But then apart from that, I mean, let's get this clear, gentlemen. He's a former cop. <laughs> and the irony, he is nabbed for stealing. Yeah. What does this represent on his part? What does this make of him as a cop, Takuzwa? Uh, as an ex-cop, uh, I think basically it's like the end of his career of yeah. detectiving. Unless he's to, to, to use, um, because I, I saw in one of the videos he was not alone. Yeah, so him being nabbed means he's detective ages might be over yeah but then does this not also paint a bad brush um you know the discipline itself law enforcement is respected yes and with law enforcement i know in as much as no but they monica are human, the law is the law the, the law, law is the law the law is the law yes yes and in most cases we always expect law enforcement to be upright mm. we always expect them to be perfect yes so the mere fact that he is caught stealing, 12, does 000. this not then... Do you know what 12,000 United States dollars looks like? Monica, that's a lot of money. <laughs> but I, I, get, I get... Not even 12,000. Just the mere fact that he's stealing. Yes, exactly. Has he not tainted the reputation of cops at the same time mm. by this act? Um, him stealing, um, him being involved in... I, I read an article, it, it, was, it was... I think it was H Metro. They were saying Kuti, he has even two other fraud cases. Yes, that have true story. I did, I did catch up with that. And and how does that then impact? Um, uh, you know, look at let's look at uh, everyone who is um, trying their best to be. Um, you know, in that space where they are on social media and they're inspired by some of his works and um, also trying to also follow the footsteps. Um, is everything now looking real or everything sometimes is not as good as it looks? Uh, I can say um, me as of, uh, as of age, I have grown not to, to be so uh, so drawn into like taking someone as a role model from social media. Yeah. But to answer your question, I can say uh, yes, people have lost hope. Um, their hero being charged yeah. with, <laughs> with these felonies. Um, yeah, so it actually decreased the whole uh, Sherlock Holmes because the, this type of field is very dangerous, it's very deadly. Mm. Uh, you can get uh, stabbed trying to review a secret, trying to review that this person is doing this. Um, cases in Blawayo have been reported on people being stabbed, people being killed mm. for just reporting that this person stole your wallet, this mm. person stole your phone. Mm. So uh, I think as of now, those who wanna be uh, Detective Keda, mm. uh, they would have been like crushed their inspiration, mm. seeing what there is their, their, their role model has been doing behind the scenes. Mm. But then, apart from that, I still uh, salute 
our law enforcement. Um, if you have also been following the number of arrests that have been taking place in terms of armed robberies, our CID departments have been doing a stellar job. So we have to also applaud yes. them. That's one thing for sure. But one bad apple doesn't necessarily mean that we have bad apples, and even when it comes to ex-cops. Yes. But apart from that, I still want to ask you, bounty hunting, which is important to note that he was doing this, filming people without their consent, mm. which brings into context privacy laws. Because we do also have a criminal codification law. Yeah. And then looking at the issue of privacy, what regulation are we supposed to put out there, even to people who feel they want this vigilantism or this bounty hunting mm. and so forth? What penalties should people understand when it comes to the law and undertaking such activities? As of what I know, as of what I've read, and as of the law that I use uh, while I'm doing like freelance work, uh, you don't take a video of someone without their permission. Mm. You don't take a photo of someone without their permission. So um, basically, he was breaking the law. That's mm. the first thing. Uh, then in terms of penalties being put uh, on people who like shoot videos without people's permission. Uh, you know, I, I think this thing has to be like made followed up uh, as in the cops and the CID team mm. and the um, investigators that do like uh, online work. Mm -hmm. They have to like make sure that they stamp this thing into action mm. because uh, when a constitution is when a constitution is refined, when new laws are added, Sometimes they end up in writing. They don't like take, people don't take them into action. Police sometimes don't, they don't take them into action. Yeah. Mm. Yes, I applaud like what the cops do, arresting people and everything. Yeah, I salute them on that. But at times there are these laws that they don't take into action. Okay. All right. Yeah, yeah, because we want to set a precedence here very quickly. Um, uh, perhaps we're looking at a time where uh, police felt like, um, this is just my theory, uh, perhaps you Be guys can give me. <laughs> police, police did uh, perhaps think that their job is not being done as clinically by this individual. Uh, I mean, by by themselves. So they so thought, let's clamp down this individual. Perhaps let's investigate him, and uh, let's also look into some of his previous fraud cases, and then bring him to the stand. What's your take on that? I, I wanted to. I wanted actually to bring that like yeah. at the first part. Yeah. Because the article that I read, it was saying on. 2 January, yeah. that's when uh, the, that happened, like yeah. when the cops discovered. This issue happened last year. Uh, so as of 2 January to the time that he was arrested, yeah. what were they doing? Oh, yes. They were yeah. probably <laughs> digging up more <laughs> files. but <laughs> They were investigating. It's called uh, doing other work and, and investigating on other cases. <laughs> After all, there are all big cases out there. And Absolutely. I, 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 I wouldn't want to take anything from uh, our law enforcement, uh, from our police force. Um, at the end of the day, they nabbed him. At the end of the day, uh, there could be other bounty hunters of his, of his nature out there. And this is just a warning to those who may attempt, or in the name of fame, or trying to just get ahead of themselves, that let the police do their job. Oh, yes. Don't try and attempt to be the police. Yeah. This is the headliner. We will go for a short break, but we would like to say thank you very much to Takudzo, our guest, who was joining us in this segment as we were talking about that viral conversation. We certainly hope that when we come back, we'll have more. Uh, more uh, conversations to discuss. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you for having me. Thank home. you so much also for bringing the youthful element to our show. again it is of course the editor's choice segment my favorite segment on the headliner and thank you to all those who are joining us from different parts of the world right here on zbc tv we are also on youtube so make sure that you subscribe to that channel and we have our editor wellington makonese joining us and i'm always happy when i see wellington because we will be looking at politics mm. <laughs> mm, mm, mm. wellington welcome once again to the headliner thank you for having me again and yes, uh, Wellington, <laughs> our political editor, and most definitely we are excited because um, uh, it is a time in which 
Um, just based on our conversation last week, there's a lot of turbulence with regards to the conversations uh, around political parties as well as um, resignations. Uh, that has been a very, very um, uh, trending word on social media. Sure. Yeah. And uh, we are looking at the headline right now that has a lot to do with the contributions of our opposition party, our main opposition party, which is the Triple C, that has seen to have lost its leadership. What is the order of the day right now? We, I know we are approaching the by-elections, and um, there's a lot of uncertainty. Please share with us. Sure, yeah. And uh, yesterday we had the news uh, that uh, the Triple C uh, leader, that is uh, Nelson Chamisa, uh, tendered his resignation from anything to do with the Citizens Coalition for Change. And um, from that uh, uh, position, he made uh, mention of issues of uh, the fissures in the party. He spoke of greed uh, within uh, the membership of the party contributing uh, to this uh, move that he has just made. Mm. And uh, we know that it's not just him, Monica. Mm. Uh, we are aware that uh, following his leadership role being uh, perhaps uh, he's taking it down himself and um, we know that many other leaders that were following suit or following his steps or following the leader and not necessarily the doctrines of the party. Who are these other individuals who also uh, decided to fall off? Well, um, it's not yet uh, certain mm. that uh, those who have claimed uh, to be following the leader, <laughs> Nelson Chamisa, have uh, tendered their resignation and they're uh, pulling out from the triple C. It's uh, informal as of, uh, as of now. As of now. Yes, uh, they just posted on their uh, Twitter account. Uh, <laughs> yes, <laughs> and saying that uh, they will follow the leader, mm. but uh, currently they are still members of uh, the National Assembly. Oh, yes. Uh, until they formally tender their resignations uh, to the Speaker of Parliament, uh, they mm. are still part of the triple C. But of course, we know that. Uh, during the past couple of months, uh, uh, people were aligning themselves either to the interim secretary general, mm. um, Senga Sochabangu, mm. and the others to advocate Chamisa. So, mm. yeah, the next couple of days or months, uh, we might see. Going to be uh, quite interesting. Yes, uh, to see where they stand. Interesting, interesting. and Monica, interesting, interesting course, times, um, yeah. I know, uh, well, of course, the uh, advocate Chamisa did lose uh, to uh, President Emerson Nangagwa during the uh, 2023 elections. Sure. Now, given uh, this development that we have at play, what does it spell out uh, going forward when we're looking at uh, the political landscape and uh, looking at political parties? Because Zimbabwe, after all, is a democracy. Sure. Yes, um, the developments in the opposition, uh, of course, uh, do not uh, reflect uh, quite uh, positively to political standing, of course, uh, particularly on their side. But uh, now that we are after the general elections where one party had the majority, and uh, through these by-elections uh, continue to garner more seats. Uh, it only means that uh, the ruling party, PF may continue to have majority uh, making decisions uh, per se. But uh, developments in the opposition, we should be uh, there to maybe chastise uh, the opposition party uh, when they have uh, such kind of uh, fissures. Uh, and of course, um, it doesn't reflect too well on the political standing. So they need uh, to put their house in order in order to be there to guide uh, the politics of the nation such that uh, we don't end up having mm. one party having a say in everything without uh, uh, the other uh, political players in the country maybe being gatekeepers. But then at the same time, we have the by-elections uh, drawing sure. closer, uh, February 3rd. Yeah, sure. Now with what has happened in the Triple C, would this not spell even a bigger disaster for those uh, supposed uh, candidates uh, for that opposition party? Would this not be an advantage uh, for uh, ZANU-PF? Yeah, it is an advantage for ZANU-PF uh, because of course, uh, um, it may also lead to, to, to voter apathy on the other end, or maybe encourage other will be voters uh, to stand for a party that uh, seemingly is organized. So, yeah, looking at the by election that is coming, that is ahead, uh, developments in the PUC, uh, of course, may affect their performance. And of course, it may also mean more by elections uh, ahead, as we can see that uh, some members of the triple C are threatening to, to pull out. Mm. Does this also not uh, look good in terms of ZANU-PF showcasing that they have structures, that political parties need to have proper structures in place? You need to have a proper constitution in place in order for continuity, in order for there to be consistency in a party because politics, uh, politics requires that if you are to be long-standing. Sure. And 
for triple C for a long time. They, 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 they said they were getting their house in order. Did, did this actually come to light to say, in actual fact, they were lying to the populace in what they were actually uh, doing? Actually, what has happened is just, it's, it's a culmination of um, uh, periods of uh, disorganization. Mm. Political analysts have been on record saying this, you need to have proper structures, you need to be identified, and also to be acceptable, both internally and of course to the electorate in the public. And that can only be done if you have a proper constitution, proper structures uh, such that uh, there is a systematic way to report issues. But uh, from where we are coming from, where the triple C was, it has been clear that it has been a, a one-man band, uh, if I may say. And of course, uh, it's just recently that we have uh, come to know that uh, there is an interim secretary general pulling the strings. So I think it's a lesson. And uh, probably if there are any moves that are going to be made uh, from, uh, from here, uh, they should, of course, be uh, structural. Absolutely, Willie, because you've mentioned structure being one of the key things that caused uh, this demise. But at the same time, I'm reading tweets over here on social media that have a lot to do with the contribution of the masses. Now, some of them, you know, some of them being very jocular, saying, my paper, ah, Nelson Chamisa, NSA, the COS, about no reflectors, it's like October in the UK. Some people are also uh, chastising him, saying, um, you know, he can't formally release this uh, paper, uh, well, the statement that he is officially um, leaving the party and uh, has nothing to do with it um, without, you know, um, showing accountability for some of the assets, some of the funds, some of the transactions. So it brings us back to some of these issues, like you've said, which are accountability. There was greed within the party and also the issue to do with structure. But at the same time, uh, what lesson can be learned for all those who would want to come into politics, not just come into politics, but also play the role of being um, a main opposition party because we've morphed several parties from MDC itself to MDCT to MDCM, now CCC. We hear of another upcoming party that um, has carried certain colors and, and doctrines. But um, what is the main take home for, I think, uh, someone who would then want to uh, get themselves in a position where they are stable? Um, we do know that the ruling party has stood the test of time with regards to that from a doctrine point of view and even from um, a results-oriented point of view. Sure, there is need for an alternative party, mm. uh, which uh, people may have thought that uh, the triple C is, but uh, the major lesson is that structures, 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 yeah. mm. so that there is accountability, of course, like you have mentioned. And uh, I'm pretty sure that uh, if there is to be an alternative, that uh, is the first step uh, to have structures so that um, people may know um, what they are dealing with. Politics is, is a different animal. You mm. need to know who you are dealing with. Okay. But then even as we come to the close of uh, the headliner, how dangerous is this populist politics or following of individuals rather than understanding uh, the politics at play. Is the word you're looking and for cults? <laughs> it can be <laughs> cult cultic. Of character. <laughs> because for lack of a better word, it could be cultic politics. Yeah. Um, how dangerous is it for people to follow individuals rather than understanding the objective of a party, having a proper ideology, having those proper structures, mm. having legacy, having history mm. and continuity? Well, uh, historically, it has proven to be dangerous, uh, probably to the extent that it can lead to, to genocide. But of course, as for Zimbabwe, I think uh, we have stood the test of time. And historically, we have been a, a populace that uh, understand the issues of uh, ideology, structure. And uh, that's why we have had uh, the kind of results that we have had uh, over the years in terms of uh, electoral proceedings. But of course, you have, you have said uh, the issue of uh, following uh, a person is actually a dangerous uh, uh, precedent that we may say it as a nation. And uh, but uh, Zimbabweans have stood the test of time. They have uh, showed uh, the world that uh, they believe in ideology. And this is one thing that uh, would be political uh, opposition should be looking into doing to have a proper structures, to have an ideology that people believe in, and also to stand for the people of Zimbabwe. Oh yes.
Uh, that's quite a valuable contribution, standing for the people of Zimbabwe. That is essentially um, what uh, we are trying to also make sure we draw as a narrative as journalists. All three on this panel are journalists. We stand uh, with the idea of a nation, not an individual, not a party, but as a nation. What are we saying? And that speaks high volumes to everything we track here on the headline as we wind up our segment. Wellington, we thank you so much for your contribution week in, week out. Thank you, Kathleen. We expect Thank to you, see Monica. more of you. Sure. Yeah. Yes, yes. And, uh, but before we, we see him go, yeah. uh, we are knockout stages. Afghan, you know, I have to sneak in some football. Yes. Last, last week, you refused <laughs> to tell us where you stand with regards to. <laughs> sure. I think you were waiting for the results for no, this week. No, not at all. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I'm not following any country mm -hmm. at Afghan. I'm following the football. You're following Africa. I'm <laughs> following Africa. <laughs> but so many surprises. Cape Verde, sure. what do you make of it? Cape Verde has been giving us some uh, exciting football. Indeed, and uh, what I observed is that uh, they have made use of uh, uh, their foreign quota. Those who have rules to their nation, some based in Portugal, some mm. Spain, and it's something that we can learn from as Zimbabweans. We have a lot of them out there in Europe with rules uh, in Zimbabwe. You hear that, Zipper? Let's make use of our foreign base. <laughs> <laughs> I like that, I like that. <laughs> okay, it has been another edition of the headliner. Wellington Makonesa, our in-house editor, always giving us uh, some in-depth uh, analysis of uh, the news of the day, and especially on the political front. Until next time, we certainly hope that you have an amazing uh, weekend. And don't forget, uh, we are on ZBC TV. We are also on YouTube. So make sure you also subscribe to that YouTube, ch uh, YouTube channel. Absolutely. And uh, from me, Kurt Lee Gwindi, it is indeed a very, very blessed weekend. And uh, we hope uh, to see you next week, same time, same place. This is the headliner. Please, please continue following. Continue following. And the crew behind the scenes exceptional as always. My name is Monica Chanda. It's goodbye.